But memory, actually, there's not a whole lot to know mm -hmm. under it, except for what I'm about to kind of write up. And then there's a lot of like little things that I kind of throw in there. But know that you're going to start with um, you're going to start with working memory. That's blue. That's why we have two blues. Ah. That's why. <laughs> so you have working memory. Working memory can hold seven to nine bits of information. Kind of like a phone number is a great example. Okay. And then it lasts seconds to minutes. Okay. Then you're going to take working memory and make it into a short term memory. Okay. Short term can hold more pieces and it's going to last minutes to days. Then from short term, you can make it into a long term memory, which can last days to eternities. Sweet. Kind of like your name. Probably won't ever forget your name. Mm -hmm. Or like you riding a bike. Or ride a bike. So that brings us to a point that there's two different types of short-term memory, or sorry, of long-term memory. Oh. There's kind of the facts of life, like what's your name, where were you born, what's the capital of Idaho, things like that, who's the president, um, that's going to be declarative. Long-term memory, so this is factual, so things you declare. Okay. Five times five is twenty-five, and then you have um, procedural, which is processes. So riding a bike. Declarative can be lost over time, or there is a lot lost over time. Mm -hmm. Kind of like maybe in fourth grade, you knew every single president down from. Uh, George Washington, wow, I almost forgot. <laughs> George Washington all the way to Barack Obama, but then maybe now you kind of struggle a little bit more. That'd be declarative. Okay. It's long-term memory, but it's a lot, a lot of it can be lost over time. Right. Whereas procedural, if I tell you don't ride a bike for 10 years and then I put you on one, you can probably, you know, muscle memory, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. They also call these um, explicit and implicit memories. Okay. Okay, so then there's two processes that we'll do. So there's two processes that we have to do to either get from working to short term and then short term to long term. The one you were talking about was called long term potentiation. 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 <laughs> potentiation. Don't let the name confuse you. We're going from working to short term. Mm -hmm. It's long term potential, but we're not at long term yet. Okay. So we'll drop this down here. We have a presynaptic terminal, and we have a postsynaptic terminal. And here we have vesicles that hold a neurotransmitter called glutamate. Okay. I'm like, oh, what is this? <laughs> okay, glutamate. Called glutamate. Glutamate is going to be released every time we want to take working memory into short term. Okay, glutamate is released, and then right here on this postsynaptic one, binds to a calcium ligand gate. So glutamate can bind there and bind there. which is going to open up, and then calcium will then come inside. Calcium needs a friend called modulin, 
and kind of binds with it. Uh -huh. So now we call it, instead of calcium and modulin, calmodulin. Okay. Yep. That's a picture. On page 498. Calmodulin is then going to go activate cam kinase. And cam kinase has, kinase has three functions. One, more glutamate will be released. Two, more calcium gates will be made. And three, more overall activity. Okay. Okay, so that's called long-term potentiation. Taking a working memory into short term. So if I give you my phone number, 303-319-004, hold it. You maybe did that once just now, but if you then repeat it in kind of repetition, mm -hmm. then you can hold it maybe until next time I see you, maybe you'll still remember my phone number. So it's just the potential, potential to, to become, become a long term. Yeah, okay. so then let's say you do this a bunch of times, and now you want to store it. You want forever to remember your tutor's phone number. Mm -hmm. So one day when you're making millions, you can thank me <laughs> and send me a check. <laughs> then you do something called consolidation. Okay. Consolidation, there's five steps under it. That make complete sense. Because everything's what we do when we learn. Repetition. So if every morning you woke up and said my phone number, repetition, you're more likely to remember it. Uh -huh. Well, it's getting enough sleep. Kind of the term sleep on it. Mm -hmm. It's true. When you go to sleep or after learning things, you remember them. Getting aerobic exercise. So go for a run, be healthy, exercise daily. Association. I'm telling you stories to help you remember them. Okay. Hippo analogies, things like that, mm -hmm. help your brain to kind of consolidate them. Mm -hmm. As well as, I'm forgetting one. <laughs> Repetition. I have no idea. Oh. Um, what is it? Repetition. Okay, so Oh man, this is gonna bug me if I don't find it. If I know there's five of them, see numbers help, then you know what you're missing. <laughs> then you know. What Repetition, association, sleep, aerobic. I'm not saying it. Oh, um, uh, pertinence or importance to us. Um. So perceived importance. So if it's really important to you to get a good grade on this test. Your brain kind of signals, we need to keep doing these to form dendritic spines. So dendritic, dendritic spines are formed once you consolidate, and their actual structures, like there's learning how to ride a bike. Here's when your boyfriend asks you to marry you. <laughs> Perceived importance, it's important to you, therefore you'll remember it. Um, here's when you learn your name. Dendritic spines, things that are actually there in your brain okay. for structures. So if you could write this down, that'll help you a lot too. Sweet. Have a lot of that information.